welcome to an Open TTD Spotlight video. Now this wasn't planned or scheduled or anything like that, but after receiving another comment about path signals, I thought I'd look into it. So this is an Open TTD Spotlight. What we're going to do is we're going to have a look into the proposition that path signals uh, decrease game performance significantly. Now I had a look online and I couldn't find any official mention that they do increase things significantly and I couldn't find any tests or anything that had been done they might be out there but I couldn't find them having a look around so I thought I would do my own investigation because it just it just feels like hearsay it doesn't seem like it's come from any particular source um, now I am a computer scientist my day job involves writing code I trained at uni in computer science, so I know a little bit about these sorts of things. And yes, in theory, a path signal has more to do. It's got more algorithm and more checking and more working out to do. But is that significant? Is it really well optimised in OpenTTD? Is it negligible? Let's look into it and see what we can find out. I'm going to do a test and see what conclusions we can draw. Now, normally, personally, I hate it when somebody uses a device to record a screen, but in this particular scenario, it is appropriate. So what we've got here is a game of OpenTTD with a lot of track, a lot of trains, and a lot of signals. And if I zoom out, you can see there's quite a lot there. It goes zigzaggy, zoomy woomy, and then it goes all the way to the other side of the map for another station, and then all the way back again where it goes zigzaggy, zaggy zoomy woomy. And I've set this game up so that there is um, 50,000 rail pieces, there are 25,000 signals, and 50 trains. Now, to put that into perspective, I normally, when I play my games of OpenTTD, by the end of the game, I've usually got somewhere between 30 and 40,000 pieces in total. That's signals and uh, track and so forth. So to have 50,000 rail pieces and 20,000 signals is definitely pushing it beyond the limit of a normal game. So I've got this game going. And as you can see, they're all standard signals. Now, on here... I have an identical game going. In fact, it was the same game until I put the signals in. And these signals are one-way path signals, okay? Now, um, this particular test doesn't include complex junctions, but there are a lot of signals, so I'm hoping to see some differences. Now, there's 500 trains running on each, on each which there will be when they're um, unpaused. Now, you can see here in my task list here, we've got open TTD, and at the moment, um, the percentage of CPU is 0 0.1 or 0 on both of them. Both games are paused. I wouldn't expect much more than anything else. Now, the interesting point to note, and this is generally about CPU, but uh, where is it? Here, that's it. The memory on the game with the standard signals is just under 300 meg, where on the other one with the path signals... It's, near, it's over 500, so it does seem to have an effect on the memory. Um, and I've also got the resource monitor open. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to unpause both games, and now both of them are running. Okay, so that one's running nicely. We've got trains going through signals. Signals are having to check to see if the section in front is clear, and the same situation here. Now, if we look here, it is not easy to see what is going on. Okay, because it's very low on the CPU usage. Um, they're still showing at near 0%. These games are just ticking along. That one just went up to 0.2 for a moment. And if we look in Resource Monitor, the OpenTTD tasks are taking an average of 0 0.04 and 0 0.03 CPU. So they're so close, it's difficult to tell. But what we can do is we can increase the load. So what to increase the load, what I'm going to do is click the fast button. That's right, all the trains are now going really fast. And we'll do the same on this one. There we go, all the trains are going fast on that one. That should increase the load, and indeed you can see now that the CPU is having to work hard on it. However, it's the one with the standard signals which is currently using more CPU. 
Now they do bounce around quite a lot. Um, you can see now that the one that with the path signals has gone up to 11.5, 12%, but it's going all over the place. Okay, now uh, if we just hold that there and I'm just adjust my screen on this side, you can see that the resource monitor is saying that the tasks for OpenTTD are using two different amounts of CPU here. Okay, but they're, they're bouncing around the place. It, again, it's difficult to say what the differences are. They are close, not the same, but one is using more than the other. Now this for me was quite surprising. I was expecting the path signals to take way more CPU than, um, than the standard signals, but this test seems to suggest that that is not the case. So what what is with all this stuff in the ether of the internet where everybody says path signals are terrible to use for your computer? Well, if you're talking about RAM memory, you're right. It does appear to show, this test does appear to show that more memory is consumed on your computer um, by having path signals. But as long as you've got enough memory, that's not going to affect performance. And the CPU seems to be worse with standard signals. So why is there this myth or legend on the internet about path signals for OpenTTD? Well, it could be one of a few things. Firstly, it could just be outright wrong. Somebody may have thought it up or suggested it, or maybe that they had a game and it was crashing and they blamed the path signals and it just became word of mouth and became some sort of false truth. That is one option. It could be a very false truth that means nothing. It could be that in the olden days it was true because OpenTDD is now in version 1.8 or at the time of recording it is anyway for stable. There's been so many generations of OpenTDD being brought out over and over again throughout the years upgrading, improving, fixing so it might have been true at one point, and, but it doesn't seem to be the case now. That might be an option as well. The other option, the third option is, is that it might actually be more CPU intensive, but my test doesn't show it. There's something missing from my test which doesn't make the CPU go crazy like it might do in a normal game. Now, I could load up a normal game and see what it's like, but I wanted a side-by-side -side test. I wanted two identical games where the only difference was the paths, uh, was the signals. And in this particular test, it you know, it does seem to show that path signals are fine. I even saw one comment on my channel where somebody claimed it takes eight times the resources for path signals. It doesn't look like it. But let me know in the comment section section of this video what you think. Do you think it's one, which one of those three do you think it is? Do you think it is just a false truth? It's just not true, but everybody thought it was. Do you think it used to be true, but isn't true now? Or do you think it's something that is true, but my test doesn't show it? There is another option. There is a fourth option, and that is it's only applicable on computers that are very, very old. I'm talking this old. You know, or younger, because OpenTTD has been around a long time. I think on any modern PC, pass signals are fine, and there's no evidence to say otherwise. If you've seen somebody else do other tests, or a comment thread from one of the developers, or maybe on the official wiki with a citation to say why it is, then please do let me know. Let me know your thoughts and ideas on this down in the comment section. I'd be really interested to know. But for now, I'm going to say... I believe it's false, and I think path signals are okay. But I'm willing to change my mind, and please feel free to try and do so. Well, I've been Master Hellish. If you want to know more about me, please go check out my website, masterhellish.net, and I will see you all sometime soon for another video. But for now, from me, goodbye.